Okay, here's the practice CCA in geometry. Number one, write the translation rule that will move Charlie Brown, who is in quadrant one, to Snoopy, who is in quadrant two. Now, I listed the quadrants in case you don't know who the characters are. Just to refresh your memory in case you forgot what quadrants are. This is quadrant one. That's quadrant two. That's quadrant three. And that's quadrant four. Okay? So that's in case you don't know who the characters are. Okay? So we're going from Charlie Brown to Snoopy. So you have to write the translation rule. And translations rules look like that. X, Y maps onto. And we're going to count from Charlie Brown to Snoopy. So if you count, you're going left. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going up. One, two, three. So the way to write that is x, y maps onto x minus 6, y plus 3. That's how you write the answer. Anything else other than the exact thing I just wrote is not the correct way to write it. It has to be written exactly like that. Let's do another one. Write the translation rule that will move Charlie Brown, this time he's in quadrant 2, to Snoopy, who is in quadrant 4. So again, here's my rule, x, y maps onto. And let's count from Charlie Brown to Snoopy. We're going to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you're going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So x, y maps onto x plus 9, y minus 8. Again, that's how you have to write it. If you write it any other way, then it is not correct. It has to be written like I just wrote it right there. <clears throat> Number three, what is the line of reflection that will bring Charlie Brown, who is in quadrant one, to Peppermint Patty, who is in quadrant two? Okay. So the line of reflection is halfway in between Charlie Brown and Peppermint Patty. So let's count from Charlie Brown to Peppermint Patty. And she is one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve apart. They're twelve apart. So let me count six away from Charlie Brown. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the halfway point. So this is my line of reflection right there. That's the line halfway in between Charlie Brown and Peppermint Patty. Peppermint Patty is six to the left of that line. And Charlie Brown is six to the right of that line. So we are doing a reflection across the line. Whenever you have a vertical line, it is x equals a number. And what is the number that x is equal to? One. A vertical line is always x equals a number. Number four. What is the line of reflection that will bring Charlie Brown, quadrant one, to Peppermint Patty in quadrant four? Let's count. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten apart. So I'm going to count five away from Charlie Brown. One, it's because that's half a ten. One, two, three, four, five, right there. So this is the line of reflection. Charlie Brown is five above that line. And Peppermint Patty is five below that line. So this is a reflection across the line. Whenever you have a horizontal line, it's y equals. So this is going to be a reflection across the line. y equals negative 3. Number five, write a set of transformation rules to get Charlie Brown, who is in quadrant three, to Woodstock, who is in quadrant four. The set of rules must include at least two different types of transformations. So you cannot do rotation, rotation. You cannot do reflection, reflection. You cannot do translation, translation. You have to have two different types. Now, remember what I told you before. It's hard to rotate to a certain point. It's hard to reflect to a certain point but it's easy to translate to a certain point. 
So always end these with a translation. So again, we can do whatever we want. I'm going to start with the reflection. So I'm going to say, let's reflect across the y-axis. You don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to do it this way. Let's reflect across the y-axis. And you write the rule, xy maps onto opposite xy. Charlie Brown is at negative 5, negative 3. So he is going to map onto positive 5, negative 3. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little star there so I see where I am. That's where I am right now where I put the star. And we want to end up at Woodstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, let's translate, three units down to get to Woodstock. So that really would be x, y maps onto x, y minus 3. So 5, negative 3 maps onto 5, negative 6. Which matches what stocks coordinates. Let's do another one like that. Move Charlie Brown to quadrant four to Woodstock, quadrant two. Let's do a rotation this time just to switch it up. Let's rotate 180 degrees around the origin. So that rule would be xy maps onto opposite x, opposite y. Charlie Brown is at 6, negative 8. So he's going to map onto negative 6, positive 8. So let's go, let's put a star there so we see where we are. Right there. Now we want to get from the star to Woodstock. So I'm going to say translate because it's easy to end with the translation. Let's translate one unit right and one unit down to get to Woodstock. So that rule will be xy maps onto x plus 1, y minus 1. So we're at negative 6, 8, and we're going to map onto negative 5, 7 which matches Woodstock's coordinates. Number seven, number eight, this is the same type of problem. I'm only going to do one in the video because it's the same type and this is kind of long. But basically, just to summarize, <coughs> you have to bury a treasure chest and you have to explain what transformations you're going to do and where you're going to hide the treasure chest. And it says you have to have four transformations. Four transformations. And you have to have at least one translation, at least one reflection, and at least one rotation. So you can move it wherever you want. I would just recommend that you stay on the, on the graph here. Okay? So you move it wherever you want. So here, let's, let's, all, let's do the same for this one. Let's rotate it. Again, we can rotate it wherever we want. I'm going to say let's rotate 270 degrees. So xy, the rule is xy maps onto y opposite x. So the treasure chest is originally at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3. So we'll map onto 3, negative 5. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to label that on my graph as I go. Now, uh, let's do a reflection next. Let's reflect. Let's reflect across the y-axis. So my rule will be x, y maps onto opposite x, y. 
So 3, negative 5 is going to map on to negative 3, negative 5. Let's label that on the graph too. Let's put a 2 there. You can end wherever you want to end. You just have to make sure you end where you say you're ending. Okay. So now, uh, we haven't done a translation yet. Let's do a translation. Let's translate three units up. Can you move it wherever you want? Let's translate three units up. X, Y maps onto X, Y plus three. So negative three, negative five. And map on to negative three, negative two. And we had to have at least one of each. We already did one of each, so let's double up. Let's rotate again. Let's rotate 90 degrees. How about that? Let's rotate 90 degrees around the origin. So the rule would be xy maps on to opposite y x so negative 3 negative 2 is going to map onto 2 negative 3 right there so that's my treasure so you just have to make sure you end where you say you're ending okay you got to make sure you follow your rules I'm just going to say the treasure is at 2, negative 3. Number 8 is the same thing, so I won't do that one out. You move it around wherever you want. Just make sure you end where you say you're ending. Okay? And that is the end of that video. That was the practice CCA for geometries.